Thank you, ma. My question is this. Garlic and ginger, like me, does not work for me. If I take it, it gives me heart bone. But they say it's always good. But how are we going to do it? Another important thing is time and curry. Time and curry. Curry, is it good? Because some people said it is not good. And the, another thing, the quantity of those things to maybe to add to our meat or to our food. No. Thank you very much, ma'am. My own question is, when you are giving the lecture, you said <clears throat> we can take banana in the night. But some, I read it that banana is not good in the night because you will not be able to, it's energy, I don't understand, but that you could take it during the day so that when you walk, it will, so that is number one. The second one is this um, date, some, I read that it's also sugar because it's sweet and it's not so much good. So I just want you to enlighten me on that. Thank you for your question. Daddy, thank you so much for, okay, just sit, let me, let me answer then, then you, you come. There's a lot in nature that is helpful. The things that can help us with stress, everything you've seen in that picture, every natural food will be helpful with stress because they have antioxidant. As long as it's a plant source, it's usually very positive. Fruits, vegetables, herbs, and spices are all very good for stress. Do you understand? The things you can grow, vegetables green, a forero, you can grow in your backyard. Water leaf you can grow. You know, any vegetable really will help you with stress. And if you can take it raw, the more you can take it, the greener it is, the better. If you can blend it and drink the juice, the enzymes get into you and start working better. Because when you cook it, you lose a lot of the vitamins. So that is that regarding what you can eat that can help with stress. Really, fruits and vegetables, the more of it, the better. So don't go and say, oh, I don't have money to buy meat. I don't have money to buy egg or fish because of that. You want to stress yourself. If you'll be amazed the amount of protein that is inside green. You'll be amazed the amount of protein that is inside soya beans, that's inside beans, that's inside groundnuts. There's a lot of healthy source of proteins that you can consume and still have a healthy body, a healthy, a healthy outlook, and also help you with your stress. With regards to ginger and um, garlic, some people have, different people react differently to different things. So you have to watch your body. So especially those that, are, that have ulcer or tend to have ulcer, those things that are spicy and peppery may not be good for you. So you want to try them. If it doesn't work, then try something else. You mustn't take it because every other person is taking it. If it's not working for you, try something else. Okay? Uh, mint. Mint is actually very good in helping to reduce the acidity level. So mint is very good. Scent leaf is very good. And they also help even in reducing the inflammation. So a lot of those things, they work together for good. So if you're taking something and it's not agreeing with your system, then you have to stop. In terms of the quantity, and I hear you saying meat, whatever you're using to spice your meat, it's not going to give you any health benefits. You're just taking it for taste. If you really want to get results from, from things like beetroot, results from things like ginger, from things like turmeric, you should be talking about at least a, table, a teaspoon full at least two to three times a day. Not just the one you use in spice and meat. So if you want to get the health benefit, you might want to make a juice out of it, make drinks with it, add it in your salad, add it in multiple food that you're taking so that you're getting little quantity of it all the time. Because it's water soluble, you're also going to be peeing it out. So you need to keep replenishing it. So what we are using in, in, um, in um, spicing our meats, it's not going to be enough. It is not in enough therapeutic dose. You need to be more deliberate, minimum one teaspoon, at least twice a day to get results. 
And it's also important that you are mindful the source of your spices. A lot of the time, people that are buying ground spices from the market, be careful. Many times those things are, I would rather you buy the bulb and process it yourself. I feel more confident about it because I've seen them mix these things with different things. And most importantly, when the sun dries it, when they dry it in the sun, as most of the ones you're getting from the market are done, you might not get a medical grade product. A lot of the active ingredients are being denatured by the sun. So please, the fresher you can get it, the better. And the more organic your source, the safer. Otherwise, grow them yourself. You will be amazed how easy it is to grow ginger and turmeric, even in cement bags, even in your, in your planter. You know, you plant it there, it will look like these beautiful flowers. They'll be growing. And then when you want your ginger, you dig in there, get a bulb, clean it and cook, and it's still growing for you. Hello? Wouldn't that be nice and fun? Okay, so let's connect with nature. The other question was, um, what was the other question? Dates, okay, banana at night. Banana is good. Remember for the purpose you're taking it. Banana is very relaxing. There's no harm in taking banana in the evening if it agrees with your system. It is natural sugar. Natural sugars are good. Banana, dates, pineapple, all the sweet fruits are good. But remember everything in moderation. If you're diabetic, you need to watch your blood sugar. If you take banana at night and it spikes your blood sugar, should you continue taking it because Dr. Stella said you can take banana in the night? Remember, I've looked at banana in the context of those that can't sleep. Instead of going for volume five for any of those tablets, take a dessert. Milk and banana do very well. By the time you take it, you're actually going to relax and sleep. And that is, if nothing else works, because take a good book and start reading, you might fall asleep. And if you do, take it, if you have insomnia, take a walk in the evening. It will wear you out. So you'll be tired. By the time you take a shower, you have an evening routine. You find out you're sleeping. If you're the one that can't sleep, you're not the candidate to have a television in your room at night. You're more likely to be animated by the television, and then you won't be able to sleep. So you have to have a routine. Know thyself and know what works for you. Thank you. Come ask your question there. Firstly, I want to ask, how do you, how in a way do you plant it, especially if he's on the staircase and you don't want to disturb your neighbors? And then secondly, how do you process it in a way that I can, we can carry it to school? And thirdly, how do you get to know all these things? <laughs> Please clap for him. I like that. Hmm. Let me start with how I got to know all these things. Please, somebody clap for my mother. <laughs> Mama, this is for you wherever you are. Mama is in America now. My mother sold vegetables. When we were young, we had a privilege. She's a trader. So during holidays, she takes us to the village. And that's where we plant. So I grew up learning how to plant different things and enjoying it. Sometimes in the early days, every day morning, we'll go to the farm. I love just the farm feel, the water, the nature, touching the soil, touching the worms, playing with the worms, trying to find different kinds of worms and crickets. And then remember when we can just eat in the farm, you know, roast our yams and eat it with oil and just have fun. I had the best of both life. I had the best of life in the city, and I had the best of life in the village. And I grew up with that. I've always planted my vegetables, my peppers, my tomatoes in containers throughout the period. When I finished from Ife, I did my university in Ife. We were poor. My husband was a civil servant. I just finished school. And I had siblings. So I started growing things in container. And I lived upstairs. But I had a big pot. You see people grow plant flowers upstairs, don't they? You just make sure that the water doesn't fall down and disturb your neighbor. 
So you put something under the pot to catch the water. Guess what? Other people were planting flowers. Me, I was planting ugu. Ugu was trailing up in my balcony. Because in those days, remember the June 12 days, all the structural adjustment days. We were structurally adjusted, so I adjusted myself. I raised my children on Gary and granuts, pap and granuts. Today, if I go to America and I don't carry granuts and Gary, and Jebu Gary, they will send me back. So I lived from the basics. I was, I'm, I'm very happy. When I went to America, they saw my teeth. The dentist saw my teeth. And I said, oh, did you wear braces? I said, brace, it called brace, knee. No, I had good food. My father didn't compromise on milk. My father buy pig milk in cartons. He didn't compromise on crawfish. My mother sold ugu in the market. The fish passes, she will buy. Anything that passes, she will buy. With full attention on our nutrition. If you don't feed your children right, you know, each day people say, oh, you're so smart. I said, thank my father and my mother. They invested in my brain when I was still very young. So, parents, feed your children now. Then they will give you results later. They don't need fancy clothes. They don't need fancy shoes. They don't need fancy toys. They don't need fancy houses. What they need the most is nutritious food. Do not compromise on that. And nutritious foods do not include street foods and packaged foods and processed foods. Try to feed them as much natural food as possible. And that is how I got to learn these things. My mother taught me, I learned from school. I was the president of my science club. I went to school where we actually planted beans. Right now, I'm teaching children in the farm. When you get pure water bags, right? Mm? Put some nice soil in the pure water bag. Put some holes around the bag, plant beans inside, put it on a corner and see what happens. Will you want to try that experiment? You'll be amazed. Your pure water bag you can have 10 of them. Or if you have a big pot, a big flower pot, or a broken bucket, put soil in it, plant some beans. The same beans your mother has in the kitchen. Plant some beans in that and let me see what happens in one week. You might just be growing your first plant. Will you try that? All right, that's what I'm talking about. Catch them young. Any more question? Thank you very much for listening. Can we put our hands together again? So you can tell when I said in the morning that if you meet her, you will not forget her. Thank you so much, ma'am, for coming our way and for being a blessing to us. Just like the um, doctor had said, we pray that God will give us the opportunity to have you again come and be a blessing to the larger body in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Dr. Iwagu has some of her products. They are on sale, I believe, outside. And so, at the end of the service, you can just go and just check for yourself and um, patronize her. And of course, she's told us to try to go back to nature. And I hope we'll take this advice, or advice that we've heard from her. Thank you once again. One of would like to thank our medical team for the great work they've done and um, most of them have been in church since morning. Thank you so much, Saz and Maz. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. And the Lord will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Most of them have been in their uniform as if they went to work in the day and they'll be here again tomorrow. Please, let's come, let's encourage members of the church we need to see them to please come around. We have we taken the offering? Good. So I think um, we want to sing that hymn. Now the day is over. Um, which tune are we using?
Does anybody remember that tune? Let's rise. Sends a glory to the Father, glory to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and evermore. Lord, we thank you for the ways you have blessed us today, most especially through your servants who are in the medical ministry of the church, thank you for the various insights and impacts that we have received today. We pray that, Lord, you will bless them. We pray that, Lord, you will renew them. We pray that, Lord, you will continue to guide their pathways. Oh, they will continue to excel in life, excel in what they do in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you so much for your servant, Dr. Stella Iwagu, you brought our way. We we'll pray again, Lord, that you will smile on her. She has been a blessing to us. You will bless her as well. You will continue to make her a light to people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we we'll pray once again for as many as are sick in our midst, they will receive your healing touch. They will receive your restoration in their bodies, in their minds, and in their souls in the name of Jesus Christ. As we continue in the week, you will guide us. As we depart from this place this evening, may we not depart from your presence. Let your grace abide with us. Refresh and renew every one of us. Thank you, Father. In the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.